Welcome to AUA Leadership in Business, an official podcast of the American Neurological Association. This episode is part of the Voices series brought to you by the AUA Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to Voices. My name is Larissa Bressler. I'm chair of the AUA Diversity and Inclusion Committee and Chief Diversity Officer. One of my core tenants is laying out to pathway to leadership for our members. AUA is committed to make concrete steps towards diversity, and that includes diversity in leadership. And I don't believe we can do that unless our members understand how leadership is created. Today, I'm pleased to have AUA Committee and Society Affairs Manager, Nancy Wade, joining us today to help us better understand AUA leadership structure. Welcome, Nancy. Hi, Dr. Bressler. It's such a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. So, um, so I thought I'd start off by talking about uh, the pathway to leadership and beginning with AUA governance. So one of the things that um, most of our members may or may not know is that the American Neurological Association is actually made up of four separate individual corporate entities and eight regional chartered sections. So I'm going to give you an overview of just each one of those groups um, to begin with. So the first thing we, group we have is the American Urological Association Incorporated, and they oversee the areas of membership and annual meeting exhibits and public policy. Next, we have the AUA Education and Research Entity, and they oversee the annual meeting scientific program, and then the areas of science and quality, education, research, and also our journal publications. Third, we have the AUA PAC, and they advocate and lobby for urology to enhance patient care. And fourth, but not last, we have the Urology Care Foundation, and they support research, patient education, and humanitarian efforts through philanthropic support. We also have eight regional geographic sections that are each separate corporate entities with their own board and their own administration. So while each of these groups all have their own organizational structure, um, the ones that we're going to focus on today is the AUA Incorporated and the AUA Education and Research Incorporated because they share the same board. So collectively, we refer to this group as the AUA Board. And I'm going to take a, a minute to, to, just to explain to you how the board is structured and how positions are filled. So um, starting at the top, we have the officers and there's five officer positions, which um, are the um, president, president-elect, immediate past president, secretary and treasurer, and then one representative from each of the eight regional sections. So the AUA president is selected um, by the sections using a rotation that rotates every 12 years and larger sections get two terms at the rotation and smaller sections get one. Um, so when it's time for a section to have their turn at presidency, they submit the nominee to the AUA, and then that individual is presented to the, um, the membership at the annual business meeting to vote on their president. So the next two positions, officer positions, are secretary and treasurer, and they're selected a little bit differently in that individuals can apply directly to the AUA um, when the, there is an opening. Um, and these officers are selected by um, a search committee comprised of AUA board members after a rigorous process that includes an interview and um, in person usually at the AUA board meeting. So the secretary and treasurer are five-year positions. So they would serve one year as elect and then a four-year term on the board. And the remaining board positions are, are section representatives, and there's one from each section. And they all serve um, a two-year term that's renewable once. And as we mentioned before, each section board is has their own governance policies. And so we um, allow them to have their own process for selecting the section representative to the board, as long as the individual meets the qualifications that's outlined in the board um, in the job description. So how do people know when there are openings on the board? 
That's a great question. So um, that's part of my job is to make sure that I send out the announcement to the sections when there are openings for board positions. Um, and so what we provide them with is a job description that highlights the qualifications for each job. Um, and also we in they include a statement that we encourage diversity amongst all of our nominees. So the AUA also provides them with a all sections with a list of best practices to be used when filling any positions for the AUA, whether it's the AUA board or committees or councils or anything that they're submitting for. Um, and that the the reason why we do that is because we want to make sure that we're using a fair and equitable process across all of our applications that we use here at the AUA. So what we recommend is generally a um, that all groups that are submitting to the AUA use an open call for nominations that is made transparent to their membership, that they use a, a nominating committee to vet their applicants, and then they have a final approval process. So we leave some of the details up to the sections, but we encourage them to just, you know, utilize the best practices and, and share all that information with their membership and uh, promote it whenever there is an opening. So... Fancy, um, you just gave us this beautiful description of the AUA board leadership structure. How does someone get selected to serve as a section representative? That's a good question. So um, each chartered AUA section, as I mentioned, is an independent entity with its own board. So there's some subtle differences in the processes across the sections. So the best place to start is with the section bylaws, which is going to outline the nominating process that is used by your section for selecting all board positions. That's good. And what are these qualifications of people who want to serve for the AUA board of directors? Yes, so um, all board members, of course, need to be members of the AUA and be members in good standing who are active in the practice of urology and knowledgeable of current trends in the development of the specialty. So nominees should have some prior board governance experience, which could come from a section board or society or even from their academic institution. So qualified applicants should be effective communicators um, with demonstrated knowledge of AUA's major program areas. Board members also must have sufficient time to devote to the position. The officer positions are incredibly time intensive and they take about one to two days a week um, as well as extensive travel. So section representatives um, are a little bit less demanding but still need to make sure they have sufficient time to devote to the task. Thank you for that answer. And now that we understand how the board is built, what are some of the responsibilities that board fulfill for the AUA? Right. So if you think about the AUA board, um, you know, you think about the governance and setting the direction for the AUA. So they oversee all the matters of strategic significance in the core areas of research, education, and health policy. They meet three times a year and they receive reports from all of the standing councils that they oversee. Um, and they do um, the normal board functions of overseeing financial management and um, also looking at program areas of member services and um, science and quality and publications and education and research. Um, so another thing that the board may be asked to do is to serve on occasionally on a task force to work on a special project or also to serve on a search committee when they're trying to select new council chairs or editors. Oh, you just mentioned council chairs. How do these council chairs and uh, committee heads relate to the board? And how does one become a uh, council chair? So now you're talking my language because I'm all things committees and councils. So let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, so the way that the AUA board is structured is they have um, five programmatic councils that serve under them. And they are education, public policy, research, science equality, and section secretaries membership council. So the AUA board oversees the council chairs, and then the council chairs in turn oversee the committees that report to them. So the programmatic or initiatives are usually developed at the um, committee or the council level, and they can rise up to the board and make recommendations. Um, and then the board is responsible for oversight or setting the strategic um, objectives for all of the councils. 
So let's talk about how these different positions are all filled and, and um, slotted in. We do have over 600 members who serve in these roles. And so it's my pleasure to work um, in a related way with most of these people. So council chairs, let's start with them. So they're picked by a search committee. So the search committee is comprised of AUA board members and staff and members apply directly to the AUA. There is a rubric that we use to score individuals and decide which three or four then get interviewed before the board before making a final selection. Um, so next we have the committee chairs. And so committee chairs are usually selected from people that are already on the committee or have prior experience on the committee. I mean, usually they have to have, um, you know, three or four years of experience before they're recommended to be the committee chair. And the decisions are usually made by the council chair in collaboration with AUA staff based on the qualifications that are outlined on the committee profile. So any member can go to AUA's website and look on the committee page, and there's a profile that's outlined for every single committee. So in there is not only the qualifications for chairs, but also for members. So if you're interested in joining or learning about applying for a committee, it's a very similar process. We accept applications between July and September. Members submit a statement of interest that highlights their qualifications relative to the job description that's on the profile. And then the selection is made by the committee chairs in consultation with AUA staff. We also have a very small handful of, of governance committees that report directly to the AUA board. They would be your Judicial and Ethics Committee or your Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Um, and these are um, appointed by the AUA president. So as far as other member positions that are filled, we have some that, like I mentioned, apply directly to the AUA, but we have some governance committees that are also filled by sections. Um, and so basically, the, uh, we do the same kind of process that we use for the AUA board is we send out the qualifications to the sections for these positions and they send us some names. And as long as those individuals meet those qualifications, we accept them um, after they've been vetted through the section level. Um, so the best thing you can do is really to go to AUA's website and just learn more about the committee page and all these different um, opportunities and how they're all structured. There's also a wonderful chart there that shows the reporting structure of, of all of our committees. That's really, really informative. Uh, you mentioned that about 600 people serve on AUA committees, they volunteer. So aside from the council chairs and the board officers, what are other potential opportunities uh, that one can volunteer to help AUA? Yeah, there are hundreds more um, in addition to committees that serve as volunteers. So we have people that work on our AUA publications, reviewing articles. We have people who review abstracts for annual meeting, um, and we have year-round courses that are done by education. We have so many people that are engaged. Um, you know, the best thing that I, again, could say is we have a volunteer page in addition to the committee page that has all different kinds of ways to get involved. We have short-term ways to volunteer episodic terms, ways to get volunteer, or even multi-year assignments. Um, one of the other interesting things that we do offer here at the AUA is some people might say, gosh, you know, I'd love to get more involved, but I really don't know much about a particular programmatic area. We do offer several fellowships for people who just are interested in learning more and training in an area. Um, we have a fellowship for science and quality. We have several in the area of public policy. And we're actually launching a new fellowship in the area of humanitarian initiatives for, for people who are interested in getting involved in those areas. So again, check out our website just to learn more. Wow, um, these are all leaders in urology you just mentioned. Um, how does one develop leadership skills to qualify for AUA, either board position or committee chair, any of that? Yeah, that's, that's a great place. Like, where do you start? It seems so overwhelming. Um, so uh, the best place to start usually is at your local section. That's your training ground for getting involved and getting engaged or at a urology specialty society or even at your academic institution. So it can start at um, an entry level. You might start by presenting a paper or a poster or an abstract at a, at a local section meeting. 
Um, and then you might get engaged, say, at a section committee or get involved in the leadership at your local section level. It usually takes this kind of engagement at a regional level before members um, are ready to apply for an AUA committee or take on another leadership position at the national AUA. So one of the neat things that we do here at the AUA is we want to try and groom up the next generation of leaders. So we have established a, um, a leadership program, which does just that. And it takes individuals from all the sections and um, trains them to help them become the leaders of tomorrow. So we just finished applications for our most recent class, and I'm just looking forward to seeing what they contribute. Um, so, you know, hopefully that gives you a general idea of the different opportunities that we have here at the AUA and getting involved. Um, I would just encourage anyone to check out our website to look for volunteer opportunities. You could also email me and uh, the team in Committee and Society Affairs. Um, our emails on the website. We can post it certainly with this podcast too. Um, just to ask about you know what you're interested in, I'll make sure that we get you connected with the right people to get you engaged. And uh, we are so very thankful for all of our volunteers because we couldn't do this work without you. So am I. I am very thankful for our volunteers and. Uh, I would encourage folks, if you really want to serve, apply more than once into several things. And if you want to serve on a committee or uh, if you'd like to do other contributions, uh, say yes when somebody asks you to be a, a guest editor or if somebody asks you to moderate a session. That's how the UA leadership gets to know you. And what Nancy just outlined is was exactly my pathway. I served on local committees, I served on local section board, was a committee chair, served on AUA committees for nearly 10 years, graduated from leadership program, and that's how I got to my position. So if I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah, if you get confused with all of this, just look at the website or email us. We're here for you, and I'd like to empower and encourage all of you to take part in AUA leadership. We need you. Absolutely. Thank you. Invest in your leadership and business skills at AUA 2023 with the new AUA Institute for Leadership and Business Track. Join the Institute at the AUA Annual Meeting in Chicago for an opportunity to grow your leadership and business skills. The new ILB Track features seven courses, offering a combined total of 16 hours of programming that will enhance your business acumen, activate your interest in business and finance, and inspire you to become a leader in your practice and the field. To accommodate the robust schedule of AUA 2023, each of the seven live courses will be recorded for access on demand after annual meeting. Resident discounts are available. Visit auanet.org forward slash AUA 2023 to learn more and add the ILB track to your registration.